الحمد لله على إنعامه والشكر له على تفضله وامتنانه ولا إله إلا الله تعظيما لشأنه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على خير خلقه محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وإخوانه أما بعد My brothers and sisters not too long ago people spoke about the Arab Spring and the Arab Spring was a people's desire to get rid of tyranny but today we will speak about the Muhammadan Spring for people do not realize that this man Rabi' it takes its name after the season of spring when life comes back to earth this month of Rabi' it marks a time when one of the most amazing stories of transformation occurred when people were changed and transformed from misguidance to guidance from darkness to light from blindness to a great vision to ig from ignorance to knowledge from the constraints of this world to the vastness and the limitless of the life of the hereafter when we speak about this month of Rabi' in which our beloved messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was born we're only acknowledging some of his rights and we are only expressing the love that lives in the depth of the hearts we're renewing our love and our commitment to this great messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam by flipping the pages of seerah and studying who was he what was his life like and what were the sacrifices that he made for me and for you my brothers and sisters when people give a khutbah about the battle of Badr in the month of Ramadan nobody pronounces them innovators when they speak about the conquest of Mecca in Ramadan nobody pronounces them as innovators when they speak about Isra and Mi'raj in the month of Rajab, no one pronounces them as innovators. So why is it a problem for some that people should talk about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in this month of Rajab? Why would people find it difficult to accept that he was born in this month? When will the narrative change? so that we can talk about the most amazing transformation that occurred in the history of humanity in this month we remember glimpses from the seerah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and how great and how noble they are here is an example our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he went to visit the dead amongst the Sahaba those ones who were martyred in Uhud he went to visit them and greeted them and he made dua for them then he said something that left the Sahabas wondering what is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talking about he said, وَدِدْتُ لَوْ أَنَّنِي رَأَيْتُ إِخْوَانِي He says, I wish if I could only see my brothers. So the Sahaba said to him, أَوَلَسْنَا إِخْوَانَكَ Are we not your brothers? قَالَ أَنْتُمْ أَصْحَابِي He says, you are my companions. My brothers, قَوْمٌ يَأْتُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي People who will come much later, after I have gone, يؤمنون بي ولم يروني. They will believe in me, 
yet they have never seen me. In another riwayah, he said, Inni lamushtaqun ila ikhwani. He says, I long to see my brothers. Expressing his love for you and me. Expressing his desire to see people who at the time did not exist. Or perhaps existed in the realm of the unseen. I would not be exaggerating on this member, my brothers and sisters, if I quoted one of the noble people who said that the love of Muhammad وسلم, for his ummah is greater than our love for him. In this month of Rabi'ah, we remember this incident that was related by Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. May Allah be pleased with both him and his father that the Prophet وسلم, one night recited two verses from the Quran. Verses that are supplications by two different Prophets. The first one is the supplication of Ibrahim salam. رَبِّ إِنَّهُنَّ أَضْلَلَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ النَّاسِ فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ My Lord, meaning the statues, they have caused many people to go astray. So whoever follows me is with me. And whoever disobey me, disobeys me, then surely you are all forgiving, all merciful. And then he recited another verse, the statement of Isa alayhi salam, in tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibaduk. If you punish them, they belong to you after all. Wa in taghfillahum fa innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. But if you forgive them, you are surely the Almighty, the wise. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam recited these two verses, he became emotional and he cried and he raised his hands and he said, Ummati, Ummati, my nation, my nation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows and sees everything, immediately dispatches Jibreel to go to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Jibreel, go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and ask him, what is it that makes you weep? So Jibreel comes and his Lord knows. So he comes and the Prophet وسلم, informs him why he cried. And when Jibreel goes back to Allah and he takes back this information, Allah says to Jibreel, O oh Jibreel, go back to Muhammad and say to him, Verily, inna sanuraddika fi ummatika wa la Verily, we will please you as far as your ummah is concerned and we will never disappoint you. On that great day, on that fearful day, on the day of resurrection, each and every prophet will be crying, nafsi, nafsi, seeking to redeem their soul, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On that day he will say, ummati, ummati. He even said, Every Prophet of Allah, he has a special dua that is answered by Allah. And every Prophet made haste to make this special dua. And we find it in the Quran. Nuh السلام, said, my Lord, do not live a single disbeliever on earth. And Musa alayhi salam, Rabbana innaka atayta fir'awna wa mala'ahu zinatan wa amwalan fi al-hayati dunya Our Lord, you have granted Pharaoh and his advisors luxuries and riches in this worldly life that they have abused to lead people astray. From you. 
على قل... ربنا ربنا اطمس على اموالهم واشدد على قلوبهم فلا يؤمنوا حتى يروا العذاب الاليم او لويد ديستروي ذا ريتشز اند هاردن ذا هارت سو ذات ذي ويل نوت بيليف انتل ذي سي ذا بينفول بانشمنت بس محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سيز وان اختبات دعوتي شفاعة لأمة يوم القيامة فهي نائلة إن شاء الله من مات من أمتي لا يشرك بالله شيئا For me he says I have chosen to keep the special dua until the day of judgment when I will make intercession for my ummah and this intercession will cover everyone in this ummah who died and he did not associate any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala How great is this Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How considerate! If Allah wanted, He would have made us from the Ummah of Isa or Musa or Dawood. But Allah, He chose me and you. And He honored us in a special way. And He made us the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this month of Rabi'ah, We're reminded of this story that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she shared. She said that one day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left the house and he was in high spirits. He was happy. He went, but when he came back, he was distressed. He was visibly stressed. And then she said to him, Ya Rasulullah, خرجت من عندي وأنت كذا وكذا. You left me and you were in such and such a state. What changed? He said, إني دخلت الكعبة ووددت أني لم أكن فعلت. He said, I entered the Kaaba. And then in hindsight I said, I wish I never entered the Kaaba. For I fear that I have made it difficult for my Ummah. Because the Ummah They want to follow the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. Everything he does, they do after him. So he felt that this action would make it difficult for his ummah. Look at this Prophet ﷺ. Every obligation that Islam has placed upon us, he feared that it would, he would make it hard for his ummah. Even this siwak that we use to clean our mouths, He said, I fear that I will make it difficult for my ummah. He wanted to delay Isha to the third of the night, to the mid to midnight. Then he said, Inni akhsha an ashuqa ala ummati. I fear that I would make it difficult for my ummah. In this month of Rabi'ah, we're reminded that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did not discriminate his nation. He did not discriminate because he recognized the status of Abu Bakr and the status of the junior and the young ones amongst the Sahaba. One day the Prophet ﷺ realized that one member of his ummah was missing. And who is this woman? Who is this member of the woman, the ummah? She was an ordinary woman. Nothing extraordinary. She wasn't a warrior, a fighter. She wasn't amongst the senior from the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. And her only contribution was that she used to sweep and clean the masjid. But this was his nature. He would seek amongst the people, the poor, the young, the downtrodden, He used to say, أَبْغُونِي ضُعَفَاءَكُمْ هَلْ تُنْسَرُونَ أَوْ تُرْزَقُونَ إِلَّا بِضُعَفَائِكُمْ Verily you are given provision and support due to your support for the weak. Did you not see this video of this man? الَّذِي نَفَخَ We can only say, هَذَا نَفْخَ تُو كِبْرُ He says, If you want me to give employment to your sons, don't ask me for employment. Ask me to give your children Panadol. I saw this clip, and perhaps many people saw this. 
This is what power does when it gets to the heads of people. And that is why we always give nasiha with no fear to the leaders, to those ones who are in authority, that they should humble themselves. And they should not think that they have superiority over people. Those people that you look down upon, these are the same people who put you in power. So the Prophet وسلم, he asked about this woman, where is she? So they told him, Ya Rasulullah, innaha matat wa karihna nuqidaka billayl. She died at night and we disliked that we should wake you up at night. So the Prophet وسلم, he said, Dulluni ala qabriha, show me her grave. And he went to her grave and he prayed the janazah upon her and he made a dua for this woman. This was not the only story of looking out for the weak and those ones that people don't see. In one of the battles, after the battle was over and people are busy searching for the dead and the wounded and he asks who's missing and they throw names so and so, so and so and he keeps on asking who's missing until they say no one else and then he said Inni la ajidu akhi he says why is it that I cannot see my brother Julaybib Julaybib was one of the youngest amongst the Sahaba as a matter of fact people used to look down on Julaybib he was not the best looking he was not the top amongst the Sahaba but the Prophet وسلم, acknowledges that he's missing. So they go looking for him and they find Julaybi was martyred after he had killed seven from the disbelievers. And when the Prophet وسلم, saw him, he took his body and he put his head on his chest and he said, Hada minni wa ana minhu. This one is from me and I am of him. Were reminded my brothers and sisters because of time. I say, go back and read the seerah. Go back and read. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants us to know this Prophet. He says to us in the Quran, Am lam rasulahum, am Is it that they do not recognize their Prophet? How many people know this Prophet? How many people know anything much about him? His seerah. Go and open the pages of the books of seerah and read the most beautiful of stories. If the story of Yusuf السلام, has been referred to in the Quran as Ahsan al Qasas, what do you think of the story of Muhammad وسلم, when he was born and all the miracles that were witnessed when he was born? When his mother said that she saw light coming out of her womb and through this light she could see the palaces of the Levant, which is in modern day Syria. When she gave birth, when she was pregnant with the child, she says she did not feel the burden of carrying him in her stomach. And when the child was given birth to, Read in the books of Sirah. You will find all of this information. There was no blur. There was no blood when, she, when he was given birth to. Read the story of when Halima to Sa'diya, she came with a woman from the Badia, from the Bedouins. They came to Mecca looking for babies that they could suckle so that they could earn something. And every woman took a baby back home, she could not find anyone. Because nobody wanted to take Muhammad After all, he was an orphan. Who will give them payment? So eventually, when she couldn't find any child, she took Muhammad And the woman says, because of the tough times, there was no food. And her breasts, could not produce milk. She also had her own baby infant. And the baby infant the previous night 
was crying the whole night because the mother did not have any breast, any milk in her breast. And when she took the baby, Muhammad, and she brought it to her breast, and the breast was filled with milk instantly. And the animal that she came on, that was left far behind the others, all of a sudden it is moving at such amazing speed that it overtakes all the others. Like one of the elders, he said, this animal became like a V8. It overtook all the other animals. And ask Halima to Saadiyah and her husband, when it was night time, if they needed to light a light, because the light of this baby, it would fill the whole room. This was no ordinary child. Everything about him is a miracle. The first open heart surgery ever done on a human being, it was done on him when he was only four years old. This child would come to the Kaaba and would sit on a special place that is only reserved for his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. No one would be allowed to sit there. But this child would come and sit there. And when they tried to remove him, his grandfather would say, don't remove him. For my son will one day become something very big. And he became the greatest of Allah's creation. Why is it that we find it heavy on our hearts that people should talk about the seerah in this month of Rabi'ah? Why is the narration only condemning a section of this ummah who do certain things? I say this on this member. To those ones who celebrate the Mawlid and those ones who don't celebrate, they all have more in common than what divides them. They are all united by the love of this Prophet ﷺ. And I say to those ones who say we love the Prophet ﷺ and they do not follow him, هَذَا بِمَثَابَةٍ this is like praying salah with no wudu. Is this salah valid? It is not valid. If you do not follow the Prophet وسلم, then your love for him is not genuine. I'm amazed that when people would fill the masjid and do a certain celebration the whole night, and when you come back the next morning for Salatul Fajr, لا ترى منهم أحد. You do not see a single one of them in the masjid. أين ذهبوا? Where did they go to? Where is the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? If you cannot strive to come to the masjid and pray Salatul Fajr, what kind of love is this? So we say, in this month, we will remember him. And Allah has told us, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them of Allah's days of favor. And one of the greatest days of Allah that He gave favor to this Ummah is the day when the Prophet ﷺ was born, without doubt. مِنْ أَيَّامِ اللَّهِ Of course, it could even be the greatest of the days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The day when this Prophet was born. As a mercy to humanity and as a mercy to this ummah. So we will talk about the Prophet ﷺ. And we will encourage people to read and study the seerah. On condition that it does not end in Rabi'ah. It continues beyond Rabi'ah. Muhammadan. Every day the sun rises, it reminds us of Rasulullah And every day when the sun sets, it reminds us of Rasulullah I know some people will misquote me after this khutbah. They will go spreading rumors. I've only expressed the love for the Prophet If you find that objectionable, then I have nothing to say to you, my brother or my sister. عباد الله إن الله أمركم بأمر بدأ فيه بنفسه وثن به ملائكته المسبحة بقدسه فقال 
عز من قائل عليم مخبرا وامرا ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وزد وانعم وبارك على عبدك وخليلك محمد وعلى اله وصحابته اجمعين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد اللهم اللهم ارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة اللهم ارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة اللهم اسقنا من حوضه شربة لا نظمأ بعدها اللهم احشرنا في زمرته صلى الله عليه وسلم قوموا إلى صلاتكم